morning, Wildcats. I'm here to read you the last final chapter of our read aloud. Today we're going to finish chapter 10 titled Dribble. Don't get too sad. I have a surprise lined up for you tomorrow. Let's go in and finish today with Peter and Mr. Hatcher and of course Fudge. Chapter 10, Dribble. I will never forget Friday, May 10th. It's the most important day of my life. It didn't start out that way. It started out ordinary. I went to school. I ate my lunch. I had gym or PE. And then I walked home from school with Jimmy Fargo. We planned to meet at our special rock in the park as soon as we changed our clothes. In the elevator, I told Henry I was glad summer was coming. Henry said he was too. When I got out at my floor, I walked down the hall and opened the door to my apartment. I took off my jacket and hung it in the closet. I put my books on the hall table next to my mother's purse. I went straight to my room to change my clothes and check dribble. The first thing I noticed was my chain latch. Chain latch is the thing that you hook on your door to keep it locked and you can slide it back and forth. Remember, he wanted a locked door after Fudgy ruined his pool store. It was unhooked. My bedroom door was open and there was a chair smack in the middle of my doorway. I nearly tumbled over it. I ran to my dresser to check Dribble. He wasn't there. His bowl with the rocks and water was there, but Dribble was gone. I got really scared. I thought maybe he died while I was at school and I didn't know about it. So I rushed into the kitchen and hollered, Mom, where's Dribble? My mother was baking something. My father's, my brother sat on the kitchen floor, banging pots and pans together. Be quiet, I yelled at Fudge. I can't hear anything with all that noise. What did you say, Peter? My mother asked me. I said I can't find Dribble. Where is he? You mean he's not in his bowl, my mother asked. I shook my head. Oh dear, my mother said. I hope he's not crawling around somewhere. You know I don't like the way he smells. I'm going to have to look in the bedrooms. You check in here, Peter. My mother hurried off. I looked at my brother. He was smiling. Fudge, do you know where Dribble is? I asked calmly. Fudge kept smiling. Did you take him? Did you, Fudge? I asked him not so calmly. <laughs> Fudge giggled <laughs> and covered his mouth with his hands. I yelled, where is he? What did you do with my turtle? No answer from Fudge. He banged his pots and pans together again. I yanked the pots out of his hand. I tried to speak softly. Now, tell me where Dribble is. Just tell me where my turtle is. I won't be mad if you tell me. Come on, Fudge, please. Fudge looked up at me. In my tummy, he said. What do you mean in tummy? I asked, narrowing my eyes. Dribble in tummy, he repeated. What tummy? I shouted at my brother. This one, Fudge said, rubbing his stomach. Dribble in this tummy, right here. I decided to go along with his game. Okay, how did he get in there, Fudge, I asked. Fudge stood up. He jumped up and down and sang out, I ate him, ate him, ate him. Then he ran out of the room. My mother came back into the kitchen. Well, I just can't find him anywhere, she said. I looked in all the dresser drawers and the bathroom cabinets and the shower and the tub and mom, I said, shaking my head. How could you? How could I what, Peter, mom said. How could you let him do it? Let who do what, Peter, mom asked. Let fudge eat dribble, I screamed. My mother started to mix whatever she was baking. Don't be silly, Peter, she said. Dribble is a turtle. He ate dribble, I insisted. Peter Warren Hatcher, stop saying that, Mom hollered. Well, go ask him. Go ahead and ask him, I told her. Fudge was standing in the kitchen doorway with a big grin on his face. My mother picked him up and patted his head. Fudgy, she said to him, tell Mommy where Brother's turtle is. In tummy, Fudge said. What tummy? Mom asked. Mine! Fudge laughed. Ha 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 ha. My mother put Fudge down on the kitchen counter where he couldn't get away from her. Oh, you're fooling, Mommy. 
right? No, fool, Fudge said. My mother turned very pale. You really ate your brother's turtle? Big smile from Fudge. You mean that you put him in your mouth and chewed him up? Like this? Mom made believe she was chewing. No, Fudge said. Oh, a smile of relief crossed my mother's face. Of course you didn't. It's just a joke. She put Fudge down on the floor and gave me a look. What do you think? Do you think Pudge? <laughs> do you think Fudge ate Peter's turtle dribble? Thumbs up? Yeah, he definitely did. Thumbs up? No way, Jose. What do you think? Let's keep reading to find out. Fudge babbled. No chew, no chew. Gulp. Gulp. All gone, turtle. Down Fudge's tummy. Me and my mother stared at Fudge. You didn't, Mom said. Did so, Fudge said. No, Mom shouted back. Yes, Fudge shouted back. Yes, Mom said weakly, holding onto a chair with both hands. Yes, Fudge beamed. My mother moaned and picked up my brother. Oh, no, my angel, my precious little baby. Oh, no. My mother didn't stop to think about my turtle. She didn't even give Dribble a thought. She didn't even stop to wonder how my turtle liked being swallowed by my brother. She ran to the phone with Fudge tucked under one arm. I followed. Mom dialed the operator and cried, Oh, help! This is an emergency! My baby ate a turtle! Stop that laughing! My mother told the operator. Send an ambulance right away. 25 West 68th Street. Mom hung up. She didn't look too well. Tears were running down her face. She put Fudge down on the floor. I couldn't understand why she was so upset. Fudge seemed just fine. Help me, Peter, Mom begged. Get me blankets. I ran into my brother's room. I grabbed two blankets from Fudge's bed. He was following me around with that silly grin on his face. I felt like giving him a pinch. How could he stand there looking so happy when he had my turtle inside of him? I delivered the blankets to my mother. She wrapped Fudge up in them and ran to the front door. I followed and grabbed her purse from the hall table. I figured she'd be glad I thought of that. Out in the hall, I pressed the elevator buzzer. We had to wait a few minutes. Mom paced up and down in front of the elevator. Fudge was cradled in her arms. He sucked his fingers and made that slurping noise I like. But all I could think of was dribble. I'm going to pause for a second. And I notice that we're starting, well, we've gotten to the end of our book. And I know that the end of a fiction story, there's always, there's motivation, problem, solution, and that one we're missing, the lesson learned. So as we finish these last few pages, I want you to start thinking, what lesson have we been learning from Peter and Fudge in every single chapter? Peter's thoughts, his actions, and the words he says, what has he been teaching us all along about family and little brothers and big brothers? Hmm. Let's keep reading for more. Finally, the elevator got to our floor. There were three people in it besides Henry. This is an emergency, Mom wailed. The ambulance is waiting downstairs. Please hurry. Yes, Mrs. Hatcher, of course, Henry said. I'll run her down just as fast as I can. No other stops. Someone poked me in the back. I turned around. It was Mrs. Rudder. What's the matter? She whispered. It's my brother, I whispered back. He ate my turtle. Mrs. R Rudder whispered that to the man next to her, and he whispered it to the lady next to him, who whispered it to Henry. I faced front and pretended I didn't hear anything. My mother turned around with fudge in her arms and said, that's not funny, not funny at all. But Fudge said, funny, 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 fudgy. Everybody laughed. Everybody except my mother. The elevator door opened. Two men dressed in white were waiting with a stretcher. This the baby? One of them asked. Yes, yes it is, mom sobbed. Don't worry, lady. We'll be to the hospital in no time. Come, Peter, my mother said, tugging at my sleeve. We're going to ride in the ambulance with Fudge. My mother and I climbed into the back of the blue ambulance. I was never in one before. It was neat. Fudge kneeled on a cot and peered out through the window. 
He waved at the crowd of people that had gathered on the sidewalk. One of the attendants sat in back with us. The other one was driving. What seems to be the trouble, Lee? The attendant asked. This kid looks pretty healthy to me. He swallowed a turtle, my mother whispered. He did what? The attendant asked. Ate my turtle. That's what I told him. My mother covered her face with her hanky and started to cry again. Hey, Joe, the attendant called to the driver. Make it snappy. This one swallowed a turtle. That's not funny, Mom insisted. I didn't think so either, considering it was my turtle. We arrived at the back door of the hospital. Fudge was whisked away by two nurses. My mother ran after him. You wait here, young man, another nurse called to me, pointing to a bench. I sat down on the hard wooden bench. I didn't have anything to do. There weren't any books or magazines spread out, like when I go to Dr. Cohn's office. So I watched the clock and read all the signs on the walls. I find, found out I was in the emergency section of the hospital. After a while, the nurse came back. She gave me some paper and crayons. Here you are. Be a good boy and draw some pictures. Your mother will be out soon. I wondered if she knew about dribble, and that's why she was trying to be nice to me. I didn't feel like drawing any pictures. I wondered what they were doing to fudge in there. Maybe he wasn't such a bad little guy after all. I remember that Jimmy Fargo's little cousin once swallowed the most valuable rock from Jimmy's collection. And my mother told me that when I was a little kid, I swallowed a quarter. Still, a quarter's not a turtle. I watched the clock on the wall for an hour and ten minutes. Then a door opened and my mother stepped out with Dr. Cohn. I was surprised to see him. I didn't know he worked in the hospital. Hello, Peter, he said. Hello, Dr. Cohn. Did you get my turtle? Not yet, Peter, he said, but I do have something to show you. Here are some x-rays of your brother. I studied the x-rays as Dr. Cohn pointed things out to me. You see, he said, there's your turtle right there. I looked hard. Will Dribble be in there forever, I asked. No, definitely not. We'll get him out. We gave some fudge some medicine already. That should do the trick nicely. What kind of medicine, I asked. What trick? Castor oil, Peter, my mother said. Fudge took castor oil and milk of magnesia and prune juice too. Lots of that. All those things will help to get dribble out of Fudge's tummy. We just have to wait, Dr. Cohn said. Probably until tomorrow or the day after. Fudge will have to spend the night here, but I don't think he's going to be swallowing anything that he isn't supposed to be swallowing from now on. How about dribble, I asked. Will dribble be all right? My mother and Dr. Cohn looked at each other. I knew the answer before he shook his head and said, I think you might have to get a new turtle, Peter. I don't want a new turtle, I said. Tears came to my eyes. I was embarrassed and wiped them away with the back of my hand. Then my nose started to run and I had to sniffle. I want dribble, I said. That's the only turtle I want. My mother took me home in a taxi. She told me my father was on his way to the hospital to be with Fudge. When we got home, she made me lamb chops for dinner, but I wasn't very hungry. My father came home late that night. I was still up. My father looked gloomy. He whispered to my mother, not yet, nothing yet. But the next day was Saturday, no school. I spent the whole day in the hospital waiting room. There were plenty of people around, and magazines and books, too. It wasn't like that hard bench in the emergency hallway. It was more like a living room. I told everybody that my brother ate my turtle. They looked at me kind of funny, but nobody ever said they were sorry to hear about my turtle. Never once. My mother joined me for supper in the hospital coffee shop. I ordered a hamburger, but I left most of it, because right in the middle of supper, my mother told me that if the medicine didn't work soon, Fudge might have to have an operation to get dribble out of him. My mother didn't eat anything. That night, my grandmother came to stay with me. My mother and father stayed at the hospital with Fudge. Things were pretty dreary at home. Every hour the phone rang. It was my mother calling from the hospital with a report. Not yet. I see, Grandma repeated. Nothing happening yet. I was miserable. I was lonely. Grandma didn't even notice. I even missed Fudge banging his pots and pans together. In the middle of the night, the phone rang. It woke me up, and I crept out into the hallway to hear what was going on. Grandma shouted, Whoopee! It's out! Good news at last! She hung up and turned to me. The medicine has finally worked, Peter. All that castor oil and milk of magnesia and prune juice finally worked. The turtle is out. Alive or dead, I asked. 
Peter Warren Hatcher, what a question, Grandma shouted. So my, little, my brother no longer had a turtle inside of him, and I no longer had a turtle. I didn't like fudge as much as I thought I did before the phone rang. It's kind of yucky, friends, but can any of you figure out, make an inference, how dribble came out of fudge? Yucky, huh? Little. The next morning, Fudge came home from the hospital. My father carried him into the apartment. My mother's arms were loaded with presents. All for Fudge! My mother put the presents down and kissed him. She said, Fudgy can have anything he wants, anything at all. Mommy's so happy her baby's all better. It was disgusting. Presents and kisses and attention for Fudge? I couldn't even look at him. He was having fun. He probably wasn't even sorry he ate my turtle. That night, my father came home with the biggest box of all. It wasn't wrapped up or anything, but I knew it was another present. I turned away from my father. Peter, he said, this box is a surprise for you. Well, I don't want another turtle, I said. Don't think you can make me feel better with another turtle. Because you can't. Who said anything about a turtle, son? Dad asked. You see, Peter, your mother and I think you've been a good sport about the whole situation. After all, Dribble was your pet. I looked up. Could I be hearing this right? Did they really remember about me and Dribble? I put my hand inside the box. I felt something warm and soft and furry. I knew it was a dog, but I pretended to be surprised when he jumped up on my lap and licked me. Fudge cried, oh, doggy, see doggy. He ran right over and grabbed my dog's tail. Fudge, my father said, taking him away. This is your brother's dog. Maybe someday you'll have a dog of your own. But this one belongs to Peter. Do you understand? Fudge nodded. Peter's dog. That's right, my father said. Peter's dog. Then he turned to me. And just to be sure, son, he said, we got a dog that's going to grow quite big. Much too big for your brother to swallow. We all laughed. My dog was neat. I named him Turtle to remind me. The end. Let's give our book a round of applause. <gasps> okay, so I gave you a challenge. What lesson did we learn from Peter and Fudge in the whole book? I'm thinking about each chapter, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. Each one of those chapters had Peter and Fudge in it. And Fudge did something crazy in each one of those. But Peter was always there. When you think about Peter always helping Fudge, in the crazy times, whether it was the shoe store or the movie theater or the playground when he knocked out his teeth, or even like in this chapter in the hospital after Fudgy ate Peter's pet. What lesson can we learn from this book about family and brothers? Maybe family and sisters or family and cousins. What does this book teach us? I want you to think. When you have a thinking thumb, I want you to tell family that you're with right now, or ring ring and tell Wilbur if you're all by yourself, or you can even practice typing it onto the computer. What lesson have we learned? Tomorrow I'll be back to share the lesson with you. And like I said, I have a surprise. Don't be sad that this chapter book is over, because there just might be another one. Bye Wildcats, I love you and I miss you.